المبتدي الاولى الهدان الله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us in the Quran الم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمه طيبه كشجره طيبه اصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي اكلها كل حين باذن ربها ويضرب الله الامثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون this is found in the 14th chapter of the quran in a verse that i've been sort of thinking about for the last few weeks now in various contexts and one of the ijaz and the miracles of the quran is its ability to continue to speak to us and to continue to unveil new meanings as we ponder verses even if there are verses that we have visited in the past but when we do so with a new perspective or something that is occurring in your life or something that you're experiencing that the Quran reveals itself or reveals its meaning in a way that you perhaps before had not contemplated and none of us are scholars or experts with regards to extrapolating law and uh, true import from these verses but of course the Quran speaks to us as individual people as lay persons we don't need the interlocutor we don't need the intermediary of a scholar or a theologian to explain to us the verses of the Quran not in all cases and certainly if we are trying to find solace and comfort in the Quran we don't need the experts to sort of come in and inform us of what the meanings are of course if you have a legal opinion or a theological question then certainly you go to the experts but often times i think that we somehow feel that the Quran is not approachable or that the hadith or the the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not approachable it's so technical i need either i need like a handbook or i need an expert who can kind of guide me or can tell me what the nuances of the meanings are and while that is true to an extent and in particular context we cannot ever see ourselves as being divorced from the quran or our tradition because we aren't smart enough or we aren't technically savvy enough or we don't have a full understanding of the breadth uh, of the islamic tradition in order to be able to pick up the quran and read it to find solace and comfort and meaning to our lives so i say that to just by way of sort of anecdotal but also by way of telling us that oftentimes as i said we tend to view scripture the quran specifically as this unapproachable uh, text that needs to reside on the top shelf of our home gathering dust because we aren't expert enough or we don't have the requisite knowledge or the expertise to engage in the book of Allah and this is a misnomer the Quran should have its ability to speak to us and to engage us and to engage us as lay people not all of us are experts nor nor will all of us ever become experts and when it comes to the technical issues yes you rely on the experts but it should never serve as a roadblock for you to engage in the book of Allah in for us to engage in the book of Allah so this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a metaphor here alam tara kayfa darab Allah mathalan Allah is literally striking us with a metaphor daraba as literally striking us with a metaphor an analogy mithal kalima tayyiba ka shajar tayyiba that the good word is like the good tree 
Now, there are multiple meanings of this, and according to Ibn Abbas, for example, radiallahu anhu, one of the most authoritative commentators of the Qur'an, he says that the kalima tayyibah, the good word, is the karima, is la ilaha illallah, is the kalima. Kashajr al-tayyibah, that the good tree is the believer, the mu'min, the believer who believes in the kalima who believes in la ilaha illallah, that there is no God but except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that is the good tree. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that, that's according to the commentary of Ibn Abbas. And if, so if we follow that commentary through, let's look at what the verse continues to say. Because then what the, what the verse then does is it delineates, it qualifies Right? The requisite qualities of that good word and that, uh, excuse me, of that good tree, of that tree, of that believer. Inshallah, hopefully you and I. It's providing us what are, should be our salient features. If the kalima, if the belief in la ilaha illallah has truly taken root in our hearts, then we will be the good tree. And so if you're the good tree, if we are the good tree, then the tree has certain qualities. And Allah lists those qualities. Asluha thabitun wa far'uha sama Its roots are deep within the earth. Its roots are firm. Its roots, asluha thabitun fil ard that its roots are firm within the earth. The fil ardi is, I'm adding commentary, it's not part of the verse of the Qur'an. But its roots are firm. وَفَرْعُهَا فِي sama, And its branches, they reach towards the heavens. And then Allah continues and He says that this tree, so you have two qualities already. The roots, the branches that reach towards the heavens, and that it continues to bear fruit by the permission of its Lord, by the permission of Allah in all seasons. In all seasons, this tree bears fruit. So these are the three salient features of a believer, of a mu'min, one who in his or her heart resides the roots of the kalima. The kalima, the belief that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so let's focus on these three salient features. Its roots are firm within the earth. A tree can stand or can potentially withstand winds up to hundreds of miles an hour, right? Because its roots are firm within the earth. Its roots are firm. It is not shaken. It is not uprooted by calamity, by tribulation, by its environment, by tragedy. It is not uprooted. It may falter, right? A tree bends in the wind. In fact, if it doesn't have the ability to bend in the wind, what happens? It snaps. You have to have the ability to bend, yes you're going to falter. Yes, you're going to sway based on tragedy, based on circumstances, based on what you're going through, what you're experiencing. You may have crises of doubt, but those crises of doubt, those tribulations, those trials, those tragedies, they don't cause the tree to be uprooted. Because that tree is firm. It's firm within the earth. It's firm. Its roots are firm. And so while it may shake in the wind, right? It may shake and bend, but it doesn't get uprooted. And so oftentimes we mistake faltering or questioning or doubting with being the end all or being a, I don't believe anymore or I'm, something is wrong with me. Something is deeply wrong with me if I have doubts, or if I question, 
or if I falter or if I sway when it comes to tragedy or tribulation or trials that we face. But that's not what Allah is saying. Allah is saying that your roots are firm, yes, but you may sway. You may sway, but your roots, your roots should remain firm. Another thing about roots, brothers and sisters, is that roots give that tree its nourishment. That the tree will continue to feed, to nourish itself, to enrich itself if its roots are firm. If its roots aren't, aren't firm, then it doesn't get the resources it needs. It doesn't get the water, the resources that are rich in the soil that it needs to grow. And so we must remain, remain rooted, rooted and connected with Allah and His book. And this is why we have to remove, pull out all the stops as they say, remove any roadblocks between you and the book of Allah, between you and engaging with Allah, with begging Allah for forgiveness, with asking Allah what truly resides in your heart. That connection with Allah has to remain. Because that is how you are plugged in. That is how you are connected. That is how you are nourished. You are only nourished if you are connected and if you are rooted with Allah and the Book of Allah and His tradition and His noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to remain rooted because that's our only source of nourishment. I mean, not our only source because of course then the sun also shines on a tree and it gives photosynthesis and we know all about that or we studied it when we were in grade school but it needs all of those factors and so its roots yes give it nourishment but also its environment give it nourishment and this is why we surround ourselves or should attempt to surround ourselves in the company of righteous individuals of the suhba of people who are better than us people who are more connected with Allah. That is how we improve our state. That is how we continue to be nourished. Not only by engaging in the book of Allah for ourselves, but by surrounding us, by putting ourselves in environments that are nourishing, that are enriching, that aren't depleting, that aren't dry, that aren't, that aren't void of good qualities that that tree needs to grow and to sustain itself. And so that is one of the salient qualities of this tree, its roots, and all the meanings of that. The second feature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes is that its branches reach towards the heavens. Now remember, all of this is a metaphor. This is a mithal. This is an analogy that Allah is giving us. Well, what more could be a more, what, what could be more of a beautiful expression of our outward, our actions, our aman on salihah? If the roots are, are the roots of iman and faith, then the branches are our aman on salihah, are our righteous actions that we do, that which we perform, our ibadah, our charity, our prayer, our fasting our doing of good and virtue. Those are our branches. And what a beautiful met metaphor that the branches, and its branches are in the sky, reach towards the heavens, literally. Because what more do we want? What more do we aspire for, aspire towards, than what? Heaven, Jannah. Our, our actions literally are begging to reach the sama, are begging to reach the heavens so that Allah will accept them. And so our branches are our good deeds, but the good deeds of those branches, again, if we examine a tree, our branches are what give fruit. Our good qualities, our good actions that we do, that's which what, that is what bears fruit. It is also the branches that enrich the environment around it. Birds find sanctuary, animals live there. It provides shade and comfort on a hot sunny day. That's what a tree does. 
It nourishes those that it comes into contact with. And that is what we are or should be as believers. That those individuals who come into contact with us, those who engage us at the job or in school or our neighbors or people that we run into at the grocery store, they should feel nourished. They should feel a sense of, there's something about that person. I, I don't know all the details about where he disappears to on Friday or she disappears to on Friday, but there's something remarkable about, about that person. There's something really special. And that is what makes the believer be able to give that sanctuary and comfort to others. That is our purpose for existence, brothers and sisters, is to not only remain rooted in our own faith, but also to give forth to, our, to those who surround us. And the other quality of a tree, the last quality that is mentioned in this verse is that it continues to bear fruit, regardless of the seasons. Again, it bears fruit, right? Wondrous, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ajiban li amri mu'min. Wondrous is the affair of the believer. Ajiban li amri mu'min. Wondrous is the affair of the believer. That when calamity befalls that person, he thanks Allah or he turns to Allah. And when good tidings, good times, happiness, occasions of, of bliss and joy, when he or she encounters those opportunities, then he thanks Allah. Wondrous is the affair of the believer. Because regardless of what the environment is presenting it, regardless of the season, as it were, it continues to bear fruit. It continues to thank Allah. It continues to engage its Lord. That is the wondrous affair of the believer. And that is what is being described here with this tree as well. The tree of the believer. Is that it continues to bear fruit regardless of the seasons. And finally, brothers and sisters, when we think about fruit, we're also talking about posterity. We're also talking about future trees that can blossom. Because if a tree is truly a strong, rooted tree, and if it continues to bear fruit, then where once stood a solitary tree, soon you will find a grove, and then soon you will find an orchard, and soon you will find a forest. Because that tree enriches the environment around it. It bears fruit, and those fruit then become future saplings and future trees of their own. And so this is the wondrous quality of the believer, is that we produce good fruit. As even the Old Testament says, right? That you shall know a tree by its fruit. A good tree bears good fruit, right? A good tree bears good fruit. And so what are we leaving behind with regards to our legacy? What are we leaving behind for future generations? Are we inspiring those that are younger than us, those that look to us for guidance and for advice and for wisdom? What are we leaving behind? What is our legacy, if you will? And finally, I want to say not only, and I've been focusing on the individual, but if I could say that this verse speaks not only as to us as individuals, but also to us as a community also speaks to us as an organization, as MCC members. Because these features that are being described here could also describe a strong and thriving institution and organization like MCC, inshallah. Because an organization is strong if it is sustainable, right? It's strong if it is self-sustaining, even better yet. If it has the ability to sustain itself and its programming and its institutional legacy by its own self. That sustainability factor is a quality of a strong and healthy organization. And that is also a quality of that tree, sustainability. Scalability is the second quality of a good and strong organization. May this, continue, may this community and may this organization and this institution continue to grow, inshallah. I mean, may it last for future generations. 
and may it continue to offer more and more programming that is relevant and meaningful for all members and, const and constituents that it serves, right? Scalability. Third quality of a good and strong organization, and much like the tree, is intergenerationality. It's its ability to be forward-looking and its ability to, wit to outlast the lives of its founding members. Right? Every day we lose someone who was a founding member or someone who was dear to our community. Right? But can this organization, can this institution outlive this generation? Will MCC survive not only my children's lifetime, but my grandchildren and their grandchildren's lifetime? That is the well-being of a Muslim organization. That is the strength of an organization, is its ability to be intergenerational, is its ability to think beyond the here and now. And finally, and last but not least, is that every Muslim organization, every strong organization should have an identity, should have an identity. And MCC offers programming and services that form its identity. It is what makes this institution unique and special. But also part of that identity and the part of that strength of a Muslim organization is its ability to stay in its lane. MCC does what it does beautifully with these number of programmings and offerings that it offers. It can't be everything for everyone. And this is why we have multiple organizations and institutions right here in the Bay Area. Just think of the Bay Area alone, ING, Zaytuna, uh, CARE, Muslim Advocates, Ta'lib, I mean, so many Muslim, or, so many organizations, SBIA, other mosques and institutions. These are all organizations and institutions that are serving the betterment of the community. And please don't be offended if I fail to mention your specific organization. Every organization serves a function. But the strength of that organization and that institution is its ability to know what it adds, its value proposition, and to stay within its lane, and not to be everything for everyone, because you're gonna spread yourself too thin. And so that is what makes the health and well-being well of our institutions that comprise our community. And so this verse, if we reflect on it, it gives us meaning not only for our lives as, individual, as individuals, but also us as a community, also us as belonging to a thriving organization, inshallah. <laughs>